Let's say that we have two ticks, tier A and tier B, and somewhere in between we have a current tick, T. Let's also say that we have a current liquidity equal to L. When we have liquidity to the lower tick, we add a positive liquidity net, and to the upper tick, we add a negative liquidity net. In this video, I'll show you how the current liquidity changes as the current tick crosses the lower tick and the upper tick. To keep track of the current liquidity, we'll say that when the price moves up, when the price increases from tier A to tier B, we'll add the liquidity net. So when the current tick crosses over here, we'll add liquidity net. And when the price crosses over here, we'll add the negative liquidity net. And likewise, we'll say that when the price decreases, when the price moves from tier B to tier B, we'll add the negative of liquidity net. So at tier B, we'll add the negative of negative liquidity net, so it'll be positive. And when the tick crosses the lower tick, we'll add negative to this positive liquidity net. Let's see some examples. Let's say that there's some liquidity between ticks T1 and T3. Let's also say that the current tick is at T0. As the current tick goes from left to right, the price increases. And let's see how the current liquidity L will change. Let's start with T0. When the current tick is over here, liquidity is equal to 0. Now as the price increases from left to right, we'll be adding the liquidity net. So when the current tick crosses T1 to the current liquidity, we're going to be adding this liquidity net, which is positive. So at this point, the current liquidity will be equal to the previous liquidity, which is equal to zero, plus delta liquidity net, which is positive. Doing the math, since the previous liquidity was equal to zero, the liquidity at tick T1 will be simply equal to delta liquidity. Now, let's say that the current liquidity is inside the ticks T1 and T3 at T2. What is the current liquidity? Well, the current liquidity has not changed. So this will be equal to delta liquidity. How about at T3? At T3, we're going to be adding this liquidity net. The liquidity net is negative delta L. So to the current liquidity L, we add negative delta L. Doing the math, the current liquidity will now be equal to the previous liquidity minus delta L, which will be equal to zero. This is because the previous liquidity was equal to delta L. So delta L minus delta L is equal to zero. And lastly, when the current tick is at T4, liquidity will be equal to zero. How about when the price decreases? Let's take a look at how liquidity changes as the price moves from right to left. This time you'll say that tick zero is on the right and tick four is on the left. As the current tick moves from right to left, let's see how liquidity changes. Let's start with T0. At T0, liquidity is equal to zero. How about at T1? When the current liquidity crosses T1, to the current liquidity, we need to add this liquidity net. This liquidity net is minus delta L. Now, since the price is decreasing, to this liquidity net, we'll add the negative. So the liquidity at this point T1 will be equal to the previous liquidity L minus, minus comes from here since the price is decreasing, adding minus delta L. Doing the math, liquidity will be equal to the previous liquidity L plus delta L, since the minus minus becomes a positive, and we're simply left with delta L. When the current tick is at T2, liquidity has not changed, so it will simply be equal to delta L. At T3, we need to add this positive delta L. However, since the price is decreasing, to this number we need to add a negative. So the liquidity will be equal to the previous liquidity minus plus delta L. Doing the math, liquidity will be equal to L minus delta L. Since the previous L was equal to delta L, here we have delta L minus delta L, which is equal to zero. And when the tick is at T4, liquidity will be equal to zero. For the last part of this video, let's look at a more complex example. So we have some ticks. At T1, we have plus 100. At T2, we have plus 150. At T3, we have minus 150. And at T4, we have minus 100. Let's see how the liquidity changes as we move the tick from left to right as the price increases. At T0, liquidity is equal to zero. At T1, liquidity net is positive 100. Since the price is increasing, to this liquidity net, we're gonna be adding. So the liquidity at T1 will be equal to the previous liquidity, which was equal to zero, plus the 100 liquidity net that you see over here. 
At T2, we need to add another 150 to the current liquidity. So the current liquidity will be 100, the previous liquidity, plus the 150 liquidity net. How about at T3? At T3, the current liquidity was 100 plus 150. This is equal to 250. And to this 250, we need to add this minus 150 liquidity net. So this will be 250 minus 150. At T4, now the current liquidity is equal to 100. And to this 100, we need to add minus 100 liquidity net. So 100 minus 100, and this will be equal to 0. And at T5, liquidity is equal to 0.